This is Agent Hector Gallio. The following is classified Level 5, under Project Serapis, O5 Eyes Only. The discovery of an anomaly, SCP-6881, in the area of Shibbets Bay, Montana, and the loss of the Mobile Task Force sent to investigate it, prompted the O5 Council to seek information on the area's history and any intelligence on the nature of the anomaly. Going by my initial research, there is no shortage of unexplained events around Shibbets Bale. The region is currently unpopulated and unused, and has been since 1997, when a ski resort on the lower slopes of the Morning Cloak Mountains was abandoned shortly before it was due to open for its first season. I was working a hunch when I looked into the resort. I've learned to pay attention to them over the years. I might not be running around with a gun and a badge anymore, but I still know how to trust the hairs on the back of my neck sticking up and my mouth going dry. It saved my life more than once. It might do again. On the surface, the Whitetail Lodge Resort was just an investment gamble didn't pay off. The Morning Cloak Mountains had decent slopes, beautiful scenery, and potential for off-season hiking and hunting. It also had almost zero infrastructure except for the handful of cabins from its use as a summer camp years before. Looked like another failed attempt to create a tourist market where one hadn't existed before, but like I said, I had that hunch, and I believed in being thorough. My days as a field agent have given me a few connections I can still call on. One of them now works in the office of the Assistant Director at the FBI's Unusual Incidents Unit. I tapped him up for a search on Shibbets Vale and he dredged up an old deployment from 1997, just before the White Tail Lodge closed down. He got copies of them to me through some old Foundation liaison channels, with a note that said I'd definitely owe him one for this. Fortunately, the two agents sent to the resort were diligent in their record-keeping. I'd had transcripts of their interviews, notes, photographs, debriefings, the whole thing. It started with a body. Of course it did. Secret. UIU Eyes Only. Federal Bureau of Investigation. Unusual Incidents Unit. November 30, 1997. Whitetail Lodge Resort. Shibbets Vale, Montana, USA. Personnel. Special Agent Picton. Female. Unusual Incidents Unit. Special Agent Jabrowski. Male. Unusual Incidents Unit. Materials. Field. Interview. An investigation transcripts. Interview Log 1-5 Pine needles and fresh snow crumpled between two sets of footballs. Mr. Bolton? That's me. I'm Special Agent Dabrowski. There's a Special Agent Picton. Good afternoon. Although I guess it isn't so good. Mr. Bolton, you're the manager here? Sure, until the season starts. I'm just getting the place ready to open up to the tourists. So you're in charge. Kinda. As much as anyone is. The police have been here already? Of course. They're the first people we called. They came on over from Scarslow, a ways down the road. They took one look and called you guys. One of them was a recruit. He looked pretty green around the gills. I gave him a shot of brandy in the Grand Lodge. Probably regulations against that, but, you know. Have you seen the body yourself? Jesus, no. What I heard was bad enough. Can you take us there? Sure. It's in one of the chalets. We're keeping a lot of the temporary workers there while we're getting everything set up. Most of them are two to a chalet, but he was in this one on his own. He? The victim? Yeah. Mikey Sanchez. He was a construction, maintenance, odd jobs kind of guy. But there hasn't been an official identification? I did a head count at the lodge, so if it ain't him, I don't know who the hell it is. Who found the body? Maria. Poor girl. You go easy on her now. I know you gotta ask questions, but she was kinda sensitive already. After seeing all that, she spit the fall apart. We'll be as sensitive as we can. Has anyone else been in the chalet? No way. Except the cops, maybe. I got Walter there keeping watch. He's one of the housekeeping staff. Has keys for all the chalets. He'll let you in. Then let's go. Investigation Log 1-2 Quiet interior. Jangling keys slide into a keyway as the lock mechanism screeches. The door squeals open. 
What a mess. Now I see why they called us. Time to earn that paycheck. Walter? Walter from outside. Yeah? Stick around. We might need to ask you about the chalets. Uh, okay. Do I have to come inside? No, stay there. Sure thing. The door shuts. First impressions? Chaotic, but deliberate. Premeditated. Definitely one for the UIU. What do you think? No forced entry. No struggle. Windows are closed. Blinds are down. We're far enough away from any buildings that even a good scream might never be heard. Better get it all down for the record. The cops will have their own write-up, but from what the manager said, it might be spotty. The click of a tape recorder being switched on. The scene is a double occupancy chalet, comprising a combined living area and kitchen, separate bedroom and bathroom. There is one door in, four windows. At first glance, none of them have signs of being forced open. The living area has a two-seater sofa, an upholstered chair, TV, coffee table, bookcase with a few paperbacks. The back wall is a kitchen, oven, range, sink, refrigerator and freezer, cabinets and cupboards. Tasteful abstract art on the walls. Finish on the walls and ceiling is bare wood. There is a wood-burning fireplace. Radiators, too, in case you don't feel like making your Alpine experience quite that authentic. The body is against the east wall of the living area. Hispanic male in his twenties or early thirties, in decent shape, wearing only a pair of jeans. It is in a seated position with the back against the wall and both arms outstretched to the sides. Nails through both hands and elbows. Kind of a half-assed crucifixion. Maybe the killer couldn't get the bick all the way up, so he just left him sitting there. The primary wounds are to the chest. Stab wounds with a double-edged knife. Something large and very sharp, like a hunting knife. Full examination of the body will confirm. Some bruising around the upper arms and shoulders deep enough to show finger marks. The killer held him down to put the knife in. Whoever did it walked into this room with the intention of killing this man. This was no struggle getting out of hand. Paramortem wound to the throat, at or just after the time of death that let the blood. Very neat, which is how we know it wasn't inflicted while the victim was able to struggle. A white ceramic bowl was used to collect the blood. The bowl is on the floor by the fireplace, still partly full. Dabrowski, you want to take the finger painting? Sure. Six symbols are painted on the walls in the victim's blood. Two on the pieces of framed art, one on the door to the bedroom, two on the kitchen cabinets and one on the refrigerator door. They were done quickly but not in a panic. Killer either had them memorized or brought reference. You know them? The bedroom door is the sigil of Baal Barath, Great Duke of Hell, from the Ars Goetia. Cabinets are the alchemical symbols for copper and iron. Refrigerator is the symbol of a demon called Morax. The ones on the pictures, I don't know off the top of my head. The click of a tape recorder being switched off. There was a time you'd reel off half the key of Solomon. You're getting rusty. Or the killer's a lousy artist. We'll have to take pictures, do an inventory, cross-reference with what the cops have, make sure we didn't miss anything. Sound like they're way out of their depth. Still, gotta be thorough. Gotta be thorough. This place isn't open yet, right? That's what the manager said. You think the kitchens are running? I could do with lunch. Interview Log 2-5 Expansive interior. In the distance, utensils dent against cookware. Are you recording this? No, we'll just take notes. I thought you recorded everything, like on the TV. That's the police interviewing witnesses at the station. We're not the police, and this isn't the station. It's nice. The Grand Lodge? It's okay. It's supposed to be for all the tourists to come and eat and drink after they come back from skiing. You know, all cozy. Like they're all friends. You need anything before we get started? Coffee? Water? I got your cook to run us some pastrami sandwiches earlier. I could probably twist his arm again. No, no. I'm good. Can you confirm your name and your role here? Maria Barris. I'm with housekeeping. Why don't you tell us what happened this morning, from the beginning? I was collecting linen from the chalets we are using for the staff. Mikey's was the third I came to. I had my little cart with me. I rang the buzzer, but he didn't come to the door, so I guessed he was out fixing something. Always something needs fixing, you know. 
The place hasn't opened yet, and it's falling down it seems like. So I opened the door and, well, I saw it. The… the things they drew in the blood, and then him. Did you know Mikey? Sure. Everyone knows everyone, pretty much. Did you like him? Like him? Yeah, was he a nice guy? I know we're not supposed to speak ill of the dead, but if he wasn't a nice guy, it's okay for you to tell us. We need to know. Anything unusual about this morning? People around you haven't seen before? Any change from routine? No. Nothing. And what about before this morning? What do you mean? Anything strange? Things you couldn't explain? Maybe something you didn't tell anyone else because they wouldn't have believed you? Oh no. Nothing like that. We won't judge you, Maria. We won't laugh at you or say you're crazy. I don't think you're someone who would lie. We will believe you. There was… one thing. A month ago, after I started here, I saw it on a mountain, maybe a hundred yards from me, near where the trees start. It was night, but the moon was out. It was a bear. I know there are bears out here. All they gave us a talk warning us about them, but this one had six legs. Six legs. Definitely. I saw it walk away. And lots of eyes. More than two. Like a spider's eyes. All over its face. Please don't tell anyone I saw it. They'll want to lock me away. Don't worry. We're not interested in getting anyone in trouble, except for the killer, and we know that's not you. You said you opened the door? What? When you went to Mikey's chalet, you opened the door when you didn't answer the buzzer. Was the door locked? Yes. Then how did you open it? I have a master key. Housekeeping all do. Most of the staff, I think. I see. We might have to ask you more. We're requesting that no one leave the resort until we're done. That's okay. I don't have anywhere else to go. Interview Log 3-5 Murmurs of hushed conversation fill a large space. Mr. Toncredi? You're the cook here? Yeah, head chef. It's just me right now. They'll get more in the kitchen when the place opens. If it opens. You'd think it won't? Nothing else out here. They say the snow is good in season, but it's gonna have to be like freaking Kitchboo hell if it's gonna pull in the tourist. You know a lot about it. I've been around, working on a bunch of places. Did you know the victim? Mikey? Yeah. Damn shame. He was okay. Just okay? You know, sound. One of the guys. You didn't hear this from me, but he had the hookup. He supplied drugs? Just weed. Must have gotten it from someone in Scarslow. Nothing else coming through here. We don't even have any good, honest meth heads. So it was either this middle-of-the-road stuff Mikey got a hold of, or raid the liquor cabinets. He ever have trouble with anyone? Maybe he owed money to a supplier or something like that? What, you think someone nailed him to the wall over a hundred bucks worth of weed? We didn't say anyone got nailed to anything. Come on. Everyone knows. The cops were talking about it while I was serving them coffee. Nailed to the wall. Blood pentagrams everywhere. Mikey was as small time as it got. Wasn't a dealer that did that. Mikey wasn't worth the trouble. So who do you think did it? Kids. Kids? You know, black trench coats, eyeliner, hate their dads. Kids. Watched too many horror movies and thought they were the first people to light black candles and hail Satan. They keep one-upping each other. First it's, do this spell, then it's sacrifice this pet, then it's kill an actual person. It happens, right? Not very often. But it does happen. Anything else about this place? Anything weird? Not really. So there was something. Nothing. Nothing really. Just the lights. The northern lights. Aurora whatever. Sometimes it makes shapes. Like there are things flying around up there, leaving a trail behind them and noises at night from the woods on the lower slopes. Noises like what? Talking, whispering, and laughing. Sounding like children. I figured it was just me hearing things in the wind, but one time I heard them singing. The children? Yeah, little girls singing. At one time I found a nest of great fox cubs. I guess the mom had died. They were… deformed. One had two heads. It was like two of them had been cut in half and the front half stitched together. Another had this transparent skin, like clear gel. The others had five or six legs. I think they were dead. I didn't hang around to check. I couldn't find them again. Guess a bobcat or something got them. Thank you, Mr. Tancredi. 
We may have more questions for you later. Don't go anywhere. Interview Log 4-5 Large Silent Space Hi again, Walter. You don't look as shook up as I expected. The way I heard it, the place had interior decorating by Jeffrey Dahmer. What did you hear? Blood and guts everywhere. Mikey cut into pieces, pentagrams and skulls on the walls. What's your role here, just for the record? Busboy, dog's body, fetching and carrying, taking bags if there are ever any tourists to bring them? Sounds like the kind of guy who knows everyone. Sorta. That's not difficult right now, though. We're a skeleton crew until we open. Not everyone thinks this place will open. I'll admit it's not a dead cert. No one's ever heard this place. No history of skiing, even if the slopes are supposed to be good for it. Plus, when word gets out someone held a black mass in Chalet 4, we ain't going to be at the top of anyone's bucket list. Did you know the deceased? Mikey? Sure. Nice guy. Kinda funny. He was Mr. Fixit around here. Liked playing music real loud while he worked. Southern rock stuff. A few of us liked to hang out around back smoking, like we were the bad kids at school. He told stories about bumming around Texas. Don't know how he ended up here. Did Mikey Sanchez ever sell you drugs? Whoa, do I gotta take the fifth here or something? We're the FBI, Walter. We're not the badged up mall cops they have around here. We don't care about a few baggies of weed. The only thing we care about is why Mikey Sanchez died and who killed him. Sorry, still a little jumpy. Not every day a co-worker gets turned into meatloaf. Sure, Mikey dealt a little. I didn't buy anything myself, but he brought stuff in pretty regular. Nothing hard, not that I heard. Anything else going on here? Anything criminal? Anything unusual? That depends on what would be unusual. People you don't know. Seeing strange things? Unexplained events? Anything that might stand out? I might have seen something in the lake. Lake Apasawa? Yeah. You know what the name Apasawa means? It's Crow. They're the people used to live around here. It's from their word for death rattle. The sound you make when you die. Anyway, I was out there taking a breather. It's calm out there. Really pretty at night. And there was something in the water. You mean, like a body? No. Something way out in the middle of the lake. Something really big. It moved under the water, just beneath the surface, making it kind of bulge up as it moved. It was huge. It's stupid, but the first thing I thought was, it's a submarine. Obviously it couldn't have been. Either it was some weird wave, like those weird perfect storm kind of things, or it was a Loch Ness monster. I see. Could you estimate its size? Not really, just real big. Kind of expected you to laugh at me, to be honest, talking about sea monsters. We've heard stranger. I bet. We might have to talk to you again later. Sure. Not like I have plans to cancel. Interview Log 5-5 Profuse water sprays from a shower head inside a small, reverberating room. Mr. Hawley? The manager said we'd find you in here. The nozzle shuts off. Water continues dripping. Yeah, I'm Hawley. You hear about the murder? That's right. You, uh, wanna put something on, sir? You're the one who walked into the locker room. You don't like what you see? That's your problem. Can you confirm your name and role here? Franklin Holly. I'm the ski instructor. Doing much of that right now? I'm marking out the slopes, scouting the trails around here. I got plenty to do before the tourists show up. Did you know the victim, Mikey Sanchez? Not really. Word is he dealt drugs. Really? I don't put that crap in my body. Is that why someone killed him? Maybe. But not why someone painted that stuff on the walls. What do you know about that? Just what's been going around. Someone killed Sanchez and painted occult stuff on the walls of his chalet. You don't seem too shaken by it. Don't get me wrong, it sounds pretty damn sick what happened to him. But whoever did it is stone cold crazy. But like I said, I didn't know him except to say hi to. You didn't see anything unusual this morning? No, I was up on the mountain. First I knew of it was when I came back to the lodge and saw the police cars. And before today? One of the housekeeping girls says that she saw a little girl in the woods. I haven't seen anything weird myself. Sorry, agents. I wish I could tell you Bigfoot did it. I see. We done? For now. 
We've asked Mr. Fulton to make sure no one leaves the premises, and staff are not to go anywhere alone. We'll have more questions later. Hope you find the guy. He's too screwed up to not do it again. Now excuse me, I got a towel off. A door swishes inwards. Footsteps shuffle out and it slides shut. Quiet. Did you get a look at it? I was trying not to. The tattoo. The footprints on his ass? Two green footprints tattooed on the buttocks. It's called a Jolly Green. Is that a kink thing? He's an Air Force pararescueman. The tattoo is a reference to the helicopter they used in Vietnam. They nicknamed it the Jolly Green Giant. When it landed, it left impressions in the fields and rice paddies. The Jolly Green Footprint. Our ski instructor was an Air Force Special Operator. So what's he doing teaching tourists to ski way out here? An able-bodied Special Forces guy can walk into any security job they want and earn twice as much as the next guy, assuming the butt tattoo is legit. We've got a few suspects to work on. I think we know which one to start with. Investigation Log 2-2 Silent Corridor You sure he won't find out? We won't tell him if you don't. Because I'm guessing he could kick my ass for the practice. Here we go. Room 24 A key shunts into a door lock. Thanks, Walter. Stick around. Much more of this and Quantico will have to put me on the payroll. You sure this is legal? We're the FBI. We can do whatever we want. Don't worry, Walter. We're almost certain he didn't kill Sanchez. Almost certain? Like 99%? More like 80. The door creaks open. Holly keeps his place neat. Military habits stick around. Cupboards, doors, and drawers open and shut. Closet's clear. Death draw, too. Nothing hidden in either. Nothing under the bed. Guess he's not that stupid. Lots of books on skiing. Checks out, I suppose. There was something taped under this chair. Weapon? Maybe. Hey, Walter. These rooms are all the same, right? Yeah, this one's the same as mine. You keep anything hidden in yours? Drugs? Porn stash? What? No! If there's a place you can hide things in these rooms, that would really help us out. An air vent. Ball cavity. Anything like that. The, uh, the panel underneath the bathroom sink comes away really easy. Just don't ask what I keep under there. I'll check it out. A wooden panel slides outwards. Got anything? It's a book. Secrets of the Hidden Word. Unlock the power of the occult. Looks like one for you. Let me see. Leaping through pages. There's one of the symbols on the kitchen cabinets. It's the rune from the Norse god Ingvi. The others are in here too. There's Bale Barreth. So, Holly is our blood artist. Except this thing is junk. It's for dabblers. They sell it in the same place you buy your crystals and dream catchers. Just a few half-assed spells and spooky pictures. A real occultist wouldn't be seen dead with this. He's a beginner? A poser? Or he wants someone to think there's a real black magician on the loose? I think we need to speak with Parajumper Holly. We should be prepared for a very frank discussion. Walter? Yeah. You guys find anything in there? How do we get to the slopes? There's no ski left yet. Mr. Fulton said they're putting one in next season once the place makes some money. For now, we use the old hiking trails. If Holly isn't at the Grand Lodge, he'll be on the mountain. It's his way out. Then we check the lodge. And when we don't find him, we hit the slopes. Field Logs Harsh winds pick up over the mountainside and howl. Footfalls crush snow underfoot. Mr. Holly, Agent, didn't think you two would enjoy it up here in the cold. None of the staff should go out on their own. I don't see anybody else out here with you. Maybe, but when the snow really starts falling, this is going to be our intermediate slope, and someone has to know where it starts and ends. The work doesn't stop because someone died. Is that really why you're out here, Mr. Holly? Someone who planned ahead would have an escape route, maybe a cache of gear buried, in case things went south. That escape route would be across ground he knew, like this mountainside. Something you want to tell me, agents? I assume you were a good soldier, pararescue men, but you're a lousy researcher. If you tried finding some real occult text instead of throwing out random symbols from the first fake magic book you found, we might have actually thought there was a satanic killer on the loose. 
Sounds like you're making a hell of an accusation. Accusations are for when there is a doubt. You killed Mikey Sanchez. That's a simple statement of fact. We're not in an interview room. We're not in court. We can talk about this like real people. You gonna try to take me in? The regular FBI would. But we're not really on the books. Sometimes we have to skip due process to make sure something worse doesn't happen. So, whether we take you in depends on why you did it, and if there really is something worse out there. Oh, there's something worse. Has been since before the old military base was here. The things those boys saw, back in the 50s, they passed it down. Old stories about how there's something beneath the ground here. It changes you. It can speak to you. The dead at the summer camp. The ones who went missing before that. You know some crazy bastard came out here in the 60s with his hippie buddies, and they all lost their minds? Should have made the news like Manson and Heaven's Gate, but it never did. It all gets forgotten about, but the soldiers remembered. When I heard about it, I asked myself, what's happening at Shibbets Vale now? And I found out some idiot was trying to build a ski resort. Then you committed a fake occult murder to scare the tourists away. Do you have any idea how many people would die if this place got off the ground? Hell, dead and worse. If word around the campfire says some wicker man nutcase is killing people at Whitetail Lodge, the place fails, and all those tourists won't be walking into the jaws of whatever the hell's living underneath us. So you decided someone had to die. To save a hell of a lot more. It's the Parajumper's motto. That others may live. You wouldn't understand. You'd be surprised what we understand. Why did you choose Sanchez? Because he was an asshole. He sold a few bags of weed and thought he was the Fonz. Well now you know the why. Are you going to arrest me? We haven't decided yet. I have. A gun cocks. DOWN! Several gunshots cracked the air as the Brovsky and Picton scrambled through powder snow into the foliage. You hit? I'm fine. Stay behind a tree. That guy can shoot. Do you see him? No. He took off up the slope. Good job. The snow's just fallen. Not even special forces can cover a trail through that. We have to ask if we want to follow him. He's a trained killer. We're no slouches ourselves, and he'll try to kill again. He's convinced he's right. Maybe he is. If there's something that's dangerous here, a couple of deaths to keep everyone away could be justified. The UIU's done a lot worse. Sounds like you're trying to convince yourself. Is it working? Not really. You want to know what he knows? What's underneath Shibbets Veil? Yep. Then let's go. Extraneous recording data omitted for brevity. Strong winds continuously barrage the mountain slope. The tracks keep going up. He's running. How long can he keep that up? There, the foot of the tree. Something's been dug up. That's a rifle case. Must be a weapons cache he buried. So now he's got a rifle. There's a walkie-talkie, too. Just one? Yeah. Picton grabs a walkie-talkie and switches it on. Hi, Holly. Agent Picton! I know you can't just let me go, and I can't let you take me in, so someone isn't getting off this mountain. If I'm the one who doesn't make it, I need to ask you two a favor. What is it? Make sure no one ever settles in Shivet's Vale. The feds must have a way. Whatever permit someone needs, they don't get it. Whoever needs muscling off the land, you do it. We're both soldiers. We both have a duty to protect this country. We're on the same side, even if we're enemies right now. Can I trust you to do what has to be done? It might not be our decision. I don't suppose I can convince you to leave me be, Agent. We might not be regular feds, but we're still law enforcement. We can't just leave a madman in the woods picking off random tourists. That's what I thought. I'll be waiting. You see that? Up the slope? Looks like a cabin. Good eye. For hikers, maybe. Or the old logging operations around here. Think he's holed up there? There are no tracks here. The trees kept the snow off the ground. Some of the lower branches are broken off in a direction. He passed that way. Okay, skirt around. Try to approach from the back. I'll go in from the front. Try to keep him talking. Stay in contact on the radio, but only speak if you have to. Gotcha. First one to see him shoots him? That's an affirmative. Extreme prejudice. Dabrowski's butt balls cross pine needles and recede. You still there, Holly? You know that's not my real name, right? 
Something you'd rather I call you? Nah, Holly's fine. So you guys aren't regular feds? We're with the Unusual Incidents Unit. The basement dwellers out of Quantico. They give us all the Bigfoot sightings and flying saucers. I guess you've seen some shit. You have no idea. Something's wrong with the living things in these mountains. I've seen deer with crab claws, bugs the size of my head, these plants with fruit that trip you out harder than LSD. It's all one big living creature with cells and organs, and the brain is the thing underneath us the flyboys found in the fifties. I think we're a disease. As soon as the tourists hit the slopes, it's all gonna come sweeping down off the mountain and purify the hell out of everything. An agent? Yes, Holly. We're done getting behind me, but I've been surrounded before. Dabrowski, he knows you're there. A single rifle round wallops the air distantly. Two handgun shots ring out. Dabrowski, you there? Talk to me! He damn near took my head off. That's a powerful rifle. Do you see him? There's a window, but it's dark inside. Can you get closer? It's too open. He'd plug me before I got halfway. Picton jogs across pine needles. Holly, you missed. Haven't fired at a live target in a while. Back in the day, I'd have put one between your buddy's eyes. Now you're gonna come in through the front door, right? Maybe. Or we might just stake you out until backup arrives. You basement dwellers are gonna summon a chopper full of hostage rescue goons out of nowhere? No, it's just you two out here. I've faced worse odds, believe me. I see him, he's watching the door. Take him. Another two handgun shots. Picked and rushes. Did you get him? Yeah. Not sure where. Can't see him anymore. Holly? Holly, you still alive? Got me in the wing. Christ. Went right through my elbow. It's fine. I only need my trigger finger. How are you at shooting that rifle one-handed? I'm at the window. Hey, Agent. You know the only thing that puts tourists off more than a mysterious death? Oh, Christ. He's got a grenade! Two mysterious deaths. Up the mountain. The grenade discharges and explodes. A fireball devours the air. Holly's screams cut through the noise. Dabrowski, you okay? God, the smoke! Yeah, wasn't a frag. Must be white phosphorus. Ah, oh, Jesus, I can smell him cooking. The whole place is going up. We could hang around and see what we can find in what's left. The stuff burns at 5,000 degrees. There won't be anything left. Then get back to me. We have to return to the lodge and let Control know what happened. Wish we'd have got him alive. We know what he did and why. Way above the UIU average. Let's agree to call that a win. I can get behind that. Congratulations, Agent. Another case <clears throat> Congratulations, Agent. Another case closed. Not that anyone will ever know. Galio. The report by Special Agents Dabrowski and Picton was classified by the Unusual Incidents Unit. Andy had been to the Whitetail Lodge Resort was sanitized. According to the public record, Retired Air Force pararescue jumper Alexander Berwick, who was using the alias Franklin Holly, murdered Mikey Sanchez in a dispute over a minor drug deal, and later took his own life in an isolated cabin after suffering a psychotic break. Only the UIU, and now the Foundation, know any different. The Whitetail Lodge Resort shut down prior to the opening of the 1997 skiing season. The reason was poor advance bookings, which caused investors to pull their money. Maybe the gruesome murder-suicide was the reason the resort never opened its doors to visitors. Maybe not. But it certainly can't have helped. The killer referred to something underneath Shippage Vale, presumably SCP-6881, but also other anomalies with the area's wildlife. The interviews with the report staff suggested still more anomalous events, such as humanoid apparitions, aerial phenomena and a possible sighting of SCP-6881 in Lake Apasawa. The agent's debriefing and their field and interview recordings refer to other occupants of Shivich Vale, such as the military base and a summer camp. These serve as signposts for further research into the area and associated anomalies. Project Serapis will have to go back at least to the 1950s military presence, maybe further. That concludes my research into the events in Shibbets Vale during 1997. This information is classified Level 5, O5-12 eyes only. Agent Hector Gallio, signing off.